Well, hello. Welcome to another episode of Jim's Along the Garden. Okay, so now's really the last time I can um, sow any basil this year. So I've already got one batch um, um, on the go. So this is like a going like a late batch, if you like. So this is um, from Thompson and Morgan. It's basically called um, basil basil pesto. Um, so I thought I'd give give this another go. So I've, obviously I've, I've got some more ready um, going, but what I want to do is try and get a second crop if I can, so I can get two sort of croppings from it. So. What I'm going to do with this is, is plant it amongst the uh, the cucumbers and the tomatoes um, in the greenhouse. So try and grow it like that. So I'm not going to put much in. As you can see, the seeds the seeds look like like that little black seeds. Now I'm not going to put too many in. What I'm going to do is just pinch a couple of two or three seeds in the middle of each one of these cells. Now these cells, what I've basically done is filled them with compost and then just made a depression in the middle of my fingers so that the seeds sit in the middle of the pot and I'm just putting two or three seeds in each one that's all I really need to do, you don't want to put too many seeds in like that now what you could do is just basically leave these on the surface um, but what I like to do is just put a very light Using up the last few seeds. What I like to do is put a very light um, sprinkler compost over the top. Nothing too, nothing too much. Like that. But you can basically plant um, basil on the surface. All I'm going to do is just firm that down with my hand gently. Don't just put too much pressure. I'm just trying to make sure that the the compost is in contact with the seeds, really. And what I'll do is I'll give that a light watering. Obviously, label it up. And then I'll show you that in a couple of weeks as soon as it starts to come through. But what I'm going to do is be planting this in the greenhouse so it'll it'll grow quite quickly. Basil grows quite well in the greenhouse. You can plant this amongst other plants as well. Um, so the uh, you know you can put it with you know alongside your tomatoes or whatever. But what I'm thinking of doing is in the other greenhouse, it's just having a tray um, so I can. Uh, there's an area on the side and also between the tomato plants where I'll do is I'll just bob it in as and where there's a bit of space and then as the uh, as the bottom of the tomatoes get sort of cut away to make air sort, sort of circulation what I might do is bob a few of these in as well between the plants just to use up the, uh, the space in the greenhouse. Okay, so I'm going to put some more um, broccoli in. Now the broccoli, obviously there's some in the garden already growing, um, which is quite big now. And the second batch um, is is that big now. So you can see that's sort of, you know, got sort of four or five inches high. So what I'm going to do is now put the third batch in, so start it all off. So just very quickly, just to explain, all you need to do is fill a tray with compost like that. Um, get it as level as you possibly can do, so that when you water it, the, the water doesn't pull at one end and then just firm down with a piece of wood the compost like that. So I'm going to be putting loads of seeds in here because these seeds are they're not out of date as such but I'm not sure how, how well these are going to germinate so I'm just trying to use up um, the seeds that I've got so there's plenty of seeds here. I'm putting a lot more in than I would do normally but brassica seeds normally last quite a while um, and by rights I should have used these last year but I'm sure I'll get enough of these to germinate. Um, so I'm going to put, I don't know, there's about 300 seeds or so here. Uh, normally I'd put in probably about 50 seeds, but as long as I get some of these to germinate, obviously I can prick them out into the tray. So that's that. All I need to do now is um, 
Obviously just try and spread them out as much as you can. Um, just put a little bit of compost on the top. You only literally need to put um, a few millimetres, about eighth of an inch of compost on the top. Make sure that that's nice and now the one thing with brassicas, they like the firm, uh, the ground to be firm. So what I'm going to do now is just basically get, go back over with a piece of wood, like that, and firm the compost down. And what that will do is it will make sure that the compost is in contact with the seed, so the seed, seed stays moist. So the, the shell of the seed will soften and that will enable it to germinate a lot easier. So what I need to do now is put a, uh, put a label in there, which I've got one already over here, put a label in there and then give them a good watering and then they'll, um, they'll hopefully start to germinate in the next week. If you don't see any germination within a week, what I'll do is I'll re sow with some of the seeds that I've got which are um, you know, definitely within date. But I'm just, rather than throwing these seeds away, I'm trying to be as um, eco as I possibly can be and, and sort of use the seeds up. So that's the, um, the, uh, the broccoli for the next couple of weeks. Okay, so I'm going to put some more spinach beet in. Now, I have already planted this in the um, allotments, but unfortunately there's, there's, there's little beetles that are eating all the leaves away now. The one way you can get around this is actually planting it in cells like this, which is typically the way that I do it, to be honest with you. Um, you plant it in cells, you wait till it gets to about sort of two or three inches high, and then as soon as it gets to that kind of size, the beetles don't tend to bother with it. It's only when it's first coming out to the ground where they really attack it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant up these two trays with spinach beet. And then what that will do is it will allow me to let them to grow, get a head start in the greenhouse. And then I can plant them into the allotment plot um, around the ones that have been sort of attacked by the beetles. Now I don't know, the beetles are still, still sort of attacked and so there's not really much I can do with what's out in the ground already uh, with regards to the beetles. So what I'm going to do is plant some in here and then in a few weeks time when this is grown in the greenhouse I can then plant it out. So all I'm doing is just putting some compost in loosely in the, uh, in the cells. Let's quickly do this. Um, so you don't need to put sort of too much compost in because what you're going to do is you're going to plant the seeds um, around sort of five millimetres, quarter of an inch or so deep. Uh, oh sorry, an eighth of an inch deep. So what I'm going to do is just quickly put some compost in like that, it's as quick as that. Just make sure you've got plenty of compost in each one. Right, okay. Now what I'm going to do now, I'm sure I've got some compost in each one. So I've got one in the corner there and there, I don't know what right, so what I'm going to do now is just quickly put my finger into the cell like that. And what that does is it makes a, a hole towards the centre of the, the cell. And that's where the seeds are going to sit. So what I'm going to do is put one or two seeds in each one of these cells. And you can very quickly get the, the hole in the middle as you can see. And all I'm going to do is, as I say, just put a couple of seeds in each one. Just very quickly do this. Right, now spinach beet um, isn't actually in the same family as spinach, but it's basically the same plant. Um, no, I find a spinach beet that it's a lot more tolerant towards um, sort, of, sort of droughty periods. The seeds look like uh, little pieces of chalk. You saw them early on in the year when I was putting them in. I don't know if you can see that. But um, all I'm going to do is put a couple of seeds, just pinch a couple of seeds in each one of the, one or, tr one or two in each one. You don't want to be overly fussy like that. Now these should be up within um, a week or so and I'd imagine within a fortnight these will probably be ready to go out this time of year, they'll grow really quickly. What you need to do is keep them in the greenhouse, keep them nice and moist. With these um, cells you can very quickly grow young vegetables like this um, and then all you need to do is then just basically quickly put them in the ground. What it'll do is it'll give you a head start but what it'll do is it'll get the plants to a point where hopefully the beetles won't attack these as well. Um, as I say, I don't really know if there's anything I can do about the beetles um, out in the, the open plot. Um, I'll put some fleece over, that doesn't seem to be sort of s slowing them down much, so I've taken that fleece back off um, and thought, oh, I'll just put some more in. So I'd already got some more seed anyway. Um, now, spinach is a really good, or spinach pieces are very good um, um, vegetable. 
to go in your allotment because what you can do is you can keep pulling the leaves off pull the older leaves off each, each of the plants and then it'll just keep growing so you can basically get spinach growing um, on your plot um, pretty much 12 months of the year now there's I've got spinach on the allotment now which is just running to seed which I planted this time last year um, and we're just kind of finishing cropping off that now and this will be this will be growing till this kind of time next year so all you do is you just plant some more in kind of this time next year and so you, you pretty much all year round got a got a source of um, fresh greens now at the end of the year sort of during the winter it does die back so it's kind of like a, an herbaceous plant it'll die back to its roots and then it'll start to grow again in the spring and you get another two or three months of cropping out of it and then it'll then sort of um, you know sort of run to seed and then obviously you, you know you then need to take the plants out and um, start again so I'm just going putting these last few seeds in this one so I'm putting one or two in each of the, the cells just so I can demonstrate to you how to do it now, as I say this is the way I normally do it but this year to try and save time I went straight into the ground but uh, unfortunately that hasn't worked out this time. Right, so as soon as you've got sort of two or three seeds in each one of the cells, all you need to do then is just sprinkle some more compost over. And obviously these are sitting in little little indentions that I've made with my finger. Just put some more compost over like that. Level it all off like that. Now what I suggest you do is just gently push them back in again with your fingers like this then what that will do is it will make sure that the compost is in um, contact with the seed like that. All you need to do is brush off the, brush off the excess and then water these with a fine rose um, or sit them in a um, in a tray and soak them from underneath so that the so that the seeds don't wash up to the top and then you should see these germinate in the next um, sort of week or so but you know most certainly this weather and then they should be away um, sort of growing quite nicely so i'll show you these um, in a week or so's time as soon as they um, started to germinate Okay, so I've had this um, allotment for about um, 15 years, and I had one uh, that was opposite for about four or five years before that. So I've been, you know, so I've had allotments on this on, on this field for around 20 years now. And in all those years, what I've always tried to do is every year that's gone by, um, what you do is you look at what you're doing and think how you can do it better, and then sort of make improvements for the following year. And what you find is as time goes on. Um, having an allotment becomes easier and easier and easier um, because you're making things or you're putting things in place um, or doing things better so that it always works out better for you the following year. Now, there's obviously lots of variables, you know, you've got weather, you've got all sorts of, you know, other factors that, you know, you need to take into consideration. So nothing's kind of hard set. But pretty much every year that I've had the allotment, I've always made some kind of improvement. Uh, you know, I put the um, you know the winners in the screen as I put the fencing in for the the raspberries because they were um, sort of difficult to you know sort of maintain. I obviously made the tunnels because I've got all sorts of problems with pigeons and rabbits and and stuff like that. Um, I boxed in the uh, I put a fence around the root bar because that was sort of going over onto other plants and stuff. And you know every year that you know that's just to mention a few. Every year you you know you sort of or the designer put something in, you know, make something, or go out and buy something, you know. And along with the successes that I've had, I've also had failures as well, you know. I did try to put a, an irrigation system in a few years ago for potatoes, which just didn't work out. Um, so, you know, it's never um, a surefire bet that, you know, whatever you put in is going to improve the situation. But what is important is you think about what you're doing, and then as, as things move on, you make certain changes or improvements, and then having an allotment becomes a lot more enjoyable and also it, 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 it kind of takes less time. So this year I've done a few um, um, sort of things which I've sort of put together to improve what I'm doing and uh, what I'd like to show you next is a, an improvement that I've made for the raspberries because every year um, I probably spend four or five hours cleaning out the old raspberry canes and then tying them all back up individually. So what I've done is I've put together a um, um, some you know some clips to make it very easy. So what I've done is I've turned a five-hour job, if you like, into literally a five-ten-minute job, 
of um, you know sort of tying them all back up. So I'll show that now. Okay, so at this time of the year, when everything's sort of died back and you can actually see all the structures and stuff, um, you can start to think about, um, you know, whilst the weather's not particularly um, sort of clever outside, what you can do is start to think about things that are going to help you in the future to make things either quicker or easier or, um, you know, or better or whatever. Now, along here, we've got the, uh, the raspberry canes. Now, I made this frame a few years ago. Um, but what I do every year is go along and tie all of the, the raspberry canes back into the, uh, the metal structure on here. And what I find is it's, it's reasonably time consuming and also obviously you know, you're losing, using loads of string and stuff like that. So what I've thought of doing, obviously you can see I've, I've tied this side back already, but this side you can see all of the new shoots are sort of coming out and the old shoots are sort of tied back from what we had last year. Now what I need to do is basically tie these tie these um, sort of new shoots back into the um, frame. So what I'm going to do to improve things and make things quicker is basically what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to make a, a bracket here uh, which, which is going to bolt to this piece of metal which is going to come down there's going to be like a hook on this side and um, the same thing on the other side is going to come out and there's going to be like a hook on this side here and then what I can do is then run a piece of either bamboo cane or conduit pipe or some metal pipe or whatever along here and what that will do is I can push the pipe will basically push all of these back um, into place and then I'll just hook it onto the this little metal bracket here and then what that'll actually do is um, hold everything back and I won't need to um, sort of tie it back with string or anything like that then obviously at the end of the year all I need to do is basically unhook the pipe again from the metal bracket there they'll all come out I can cut them all back um, leave the new ones in and then put it back in it's going to take a couple of minutes as opposed to a couple of hours to tie all of these back and sort of trim them so what I'm going to do now is make some brackets to go in here um, and I'll put one every, I don't know, every um, sort of four foot or so going along and then I can sort of hook it back. So what I've done here, um, I'll just quickly show you here, is I've got a piece of bamboo um, running along here and I've only tied it in three places and I've, hold, I've held all of these um, raspberry canes back. So that's kind of a, an example of what it'll be. So what I'm going to do is effectively replace these bits of string here uh, and here and at the end there with like a metal bracket with a hook on um, so I can just basically just quickly hook it in and that's it it's all it's all sort of in place and ready to go so I'll just do that now okay so what we're making here are the hooks which are basically going to hold the um, the bamboo canes which are going to go up the each each side of the um, the raspberry cane so if you can imagine the metal frame is going to sit in the middle here so this is going to be bolted to the metal frame here and then all that's going to happen is um, we'll just drop a bamboo cane in there. That's going to stop um, the sort of the um, the raspberry canes from going all over the place. And then, as soon as the raspberry canes are finished with, we can just quickly lift the bamboo cane out, and then we'll be able to get to all the raspberry canes, cut all the dead ones out, get the new ones grown, and then we can put the bamboo cane back in there, and then that'll hold the raspberries in. So all I'm doing is making this um, bit here. What I'm going to do is weld a, um, a bolt coming off the bottom there. Um, sort of sticking down like that, if you like, which is going to bolt into the, um, which is going to bolt into the, the framework like that. So I'm just going to weld that on there. Now I can drop that through a hole on the frame, and then just run a nut up, and just hold it onto the frame. So what I wanted to quickly show you was how I'm making these. Now all this is is a bit of recycled pipe. As you can see I've already made. I think there's nine there already. So to make, if you're going to make anything in sort of duplicate, the best way to do it is to make a jig. Now all I've done with this is this is just a piece of angle line. And what I've done is I've welded a piece of pipe on there, which is the same, which is the same diameter as the the hook that I want there, as you can see, like that. And then I've just welded another piece of um, sort of pipe in there, just so just so I can brace and make that sort of elbow joint there, if you like. So as you can see, that's basically the way I made it. I'll just show you how I did it. So the first thing you want to do is cut all your lengths of pipe. That you're going to start with the same. All I did with that basically was made the first one, and then worked out how long each piece of pipe needed to be and then I made a quick just just a bit of wood like that and then all I did was basically put the piece of pipe on the on the other uh, piece of wood like that and then I know exactly um, like that and I know exactly where to cut it and all I did was just with the angle grinder I basically just cut all the pieces of pipe the same before I bend them what I do is um, just make sure the uh, the edges are nice and neat just put them on the um, 
the uh, the circular grinder just to make sure that there's you know there's no sort of sharp edges either end and then you're ready to go so I can show you now how to bend so what I'm going to do is just reposition the camera so you can see directly over what I'm doing and then you can see how I'm, I'm basically how, how this works you now I'm bending this into the hooks to go on the raspberry canes okay so there's the jig and basically what I'm going to do is put the put the boss this is the piece of um, Bar that I've cut that goes in there and it sandwiches between that little peg there and the part that I'm bending. And all I need to do is sort of lock it in there. Then all I'm going to do is then is just force that round with my hand. There's no sort of banging it with the hammer or anything like that associated with it at the minute. And I'll just bend it round to roughly where I need to go, which is about there. Okay. So what I've got now is that is the bend at the end there, so you can see that's similar to that. And then I'm going to put that back in the other way like that. And I'm going to use this peg here just to bend that back round like that. Now there is a bit of straightening that goes on with the vice afterwards, just tapping it with the hammer. But as you can see now what I've got is the hook uh, which goes on the end there. So all I'm going to do now is do exactly the same thing at the other end. So put the end in like that and then force it round Like that, and it makes it makes it so much easier when you've got um, a little jig like this, because what it'll mean is all of the all of the hooks are the same. So as you can see now, I've roughly got the right shape. Um, so you can see that's what it's basically going to end up being. So as you can see, I'm very close now. Now what it's a case of doing is just putting it in the vise like this, <coughs> and then just straightening straightening that top piece out like that. And all I'm going to do is just basically just push it with my hand like that there and do the same the other side like that. Now if you do sort of tap it with a hammer make sure that you don't sort of tap it here too much what you're going to do is tap it there because if you tap it um, on the edge there what will happen is you'll basically force that bit in as opposed to mending that bit there. But as you can see now I'm sort of 99% of the way there, as you can see they're practically the same. So what I'm going to do now is basically put that end in the in the vise. And looking at the top here, what I want to do is straighten it that way. And as you can see this one here, I don't know if you can see with the camera, but this is slightly twisted kind of too far that way. So what I'm going to do is put the, um, the shaft of a hammer into it like that. All I'm going to do is just twist that round a little bit and that's another one ready to go. So as you can see that's basically the pipe which is going to sit exactly like all of these others. As you can see that literally took me um, sort of two or three minutes to make. So I've now got ten of them. I'll do the same with um, these two in exactly the same way. Um, but if you're going to make multiple things of the same um, thing what I suggest you do is you make yourself a little bit of a jig like this, particularly if you're bending bits of pipe and stuff like that. Now, if you don't happen to have any um, steel pipe like this, you know, copper pipe, you know, the stuff that you use for sort of central heating. Um, I've actually got some here. I can show you. So this, this kind of um, pipe, which is used for central heating, that will that will bend just as well as this. Um, you know, one, you, you know, run a little jig like that. Um, so you can, you know, sort of quickly bend stuff into you know, sort of what you need for the garden. And, and anything like copper or this is more than enough strength in there to, um, you know, to hold the raspberry canes back. So what I'll do, as I say, I'll bend these other two up, um, and then what I'll do then is I'll show you um, just welding the um, the sort of bolt in there, and then we'll be able to put that onto the raspberries. I'll show you what it looks like when it's on the raspberries. Okay, so now all we need to do, so all of the um, parts have now been bent up, so all we need to do now is weld a nut uh, and a bolt into the middle, so, sorry, a bolt into the middle and obviously put a nut on it. And that will pass through the, the frame of the uh, of the raspberry um, fence, if you like. And then I'll just tighten up the nut at the bottom and that will hold that in place. And obviously the, the, the sort of the bamboo cane's going to go in there. So all I've done, again, always make things easy for yourself. Measure up um, the length of each one of these with a piece of wood. And then find the middle uh, using a, a rule. And then all I need to do then is put a mark right in the middle there where the, uh, the bolt needs to go. So all I've got in here is a vise with a with a bolt on there ready to go. Obviously run into the nut. So what I need to do now is hold that in the middle. Like that. So the mark that I've got in the middle of the, 
the, the, uh, the hook there just basically needs to line up with the bolt once you keep it upright then all I need to do is just weld quickly like that tack it on okay so all we need to do now is just weld up the back um, side here and then again on the front here okay so that's going to be hot for a little minute but basically that's the finished um, item as you can see that's exactly like that and all I need to do now is take off as I say take off this nut at the bottom drop that through um, um, a 6mm hole in the, uh, the frame, put the nut on and then we can just drop that in that's it, oh, that's completed the job so I'll just finish off welding these up and then I'll show you what that looks like when, the, when they're on Okay, so here are the raspberry canes, as you can see the raspberries have already started, but here are the clips that we've, that we've just made, as you can see, that's it bolted through onto the, uh, the, the, uh, the central bar there, and I've just got two sort of bamboo canes in, in there, and I've got one of these every kind of two foot or so. Now, the reason for putting them so close together, you could potentially get, you know, get away with making less of them than I have. The reason I've done that is so that the raspberry canes don't go backwards and forwards this way, so this supports them sort of going any further that way. And also I didn't want to put too much stress on the, uh, the bamboo canes, but you can see I've got one here again, and that's bolted in the, as you can see, but that's bolted in the middle there. Um, and I've done that all the way up. Now, you know, as I say, um, the putting the, uh, the raspberry canes up and sort of, you know, taking them out and clicking all the old ones out and then putting the, uh, tying them all back in used to take me you know, sort of three, four, five hours. But as you can see now, I can do it in literally a few minutes. Okay, so, and, and moving forward, I've got lots more ideas to put in the allotment. You know, I want to improve, you know, sort of various things. You know, things that I find difficult, like germinating parsnips. I'm going to put something in for next year for that, which I'll, which I'll show in the videos, of course. And uh, also improving the strawberry bed, and also, um, um, you know, so thinking about replacing the second tunnel as well. So I may well be making another tunnel in the next 12 months. So, and, and what I do is I come up with these ideas of things to do, but what I don't like to do is spend much money. I always try to do it, you know, sort of try to recycle or upcycle things, um, which, you know, which is part of the enjoyment really actually making, you know, what you're actually going to use. So um, I, I'm obviously always on the hunt for, you know, various bits and bobs of material. Um, like the, um, the raspberry hooks, I've had that planned for the last couple of years, but I just haven't had the materials to do it, you know, as I wanted to. So I've been slowly collecting the, uh, the pipe work and that to do that. Um, and the and the tunnel as well as all, I've also made a start to collect stuff for that, uh, but I haven't quite got everything that I need yet. And I always make sure that I've got everything in place before I start actually doing something. So, it, you know, having an allotment is always a long-term sort of plan. So what you need to think about is what is what could be done better now, and and, and how to move forward. You know how you can improve it. Um, and and I always try to spend the least amount of money because what you don't want to do is you don't want to you know, sort of spend a load of money on something potentially that wouldn't work, but if you have the enjoyment of making something and putting it in place and finding it doesn't work, then at least you've had a go. So uh, that, was the, that was the sort of message I'd like to sort of say to you in this clip. So I hope this episode was of some use to you. Please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions you've got below and I'll always get back to you. And I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Love and Garden. Mm -hmm.